Welcome back to Chibi Chibi Chef. Today I'm sharing two delicious pork recipes with miso. Both are packed with flavor and a perfect for quick meal. Let's get started. First, I'm making pork miso ginger. I got this chunky pork loin piece from Costco, froze it, and then half defrosted it, and to make it easier to slice. If you can get thin sliced pork from Asian grocery stores, you can skip this part. But I had many pork loin pieces from Costco, so I wanted to use it. Because it was half frozen, it was quite easy to slice thinly. Sprinkle some salt and pepper. Add one tablespoon of cooking oil. I like using sesame oil to create some more flavors. Place the pork slices in the pan. Make sure to use a large pan that allows you to cook all the pork pieces evenly. Don't turn on the heat yet. Sprinkle one tablespoon of potato starch. Cutting the pork with potato starch keeps it juicy and tender, even with lean cuts. The potato starch also helps the sauce stick to the meat, making it more flavorful. Now let's cook over medium heat. While cooking the pork to get some grill marks on both sides, thinly slice half on an onion. When the pork gets these nice grill marks, it's time to flip the slices and I'll cook the other side. Since the pork is coated with potato starch, it gets a slightly crispy texture when cooked. After flipping the pork slices, Place the onions on top. Next, while the pork and onions are cooking, let's prepare the miso sauce to mix them. I'm using this white miso, but you can use any miso other than red miso. Because red miso is too strong for this dish, you won't be able to taste the ginger. I explained the difference of major kinds of Japanese miso in the previous video, Miso Chicken Recipes. So please check it out if you haven't. Add a miso and a grated ginger. If you love ginger, you can add more. Add a mirror for a touch of sweetness and extra depth of flavor. Add a little bit of sugar. Mix them well. Going back to the pork, and it's looking good. Add the ginger miso sauce on top of the pork and mix them well. Miso burns easily, so make sure to keep it at low heat and don't cook it for too long. Now it's done! Crunchy raw cabbage is the basic side for Japanese ginger pork. Thanks to the potato starch, the grill mugs look so tasty. The onions are nicely cooked too. Ginger pork is my go-to Japanese lunch dish, and with miso, it has an even deeper flavor. Of course, it goes great with rice, so make sure to cook some rice too. Let's move on to the next dish. This is one of the most popular Japanese dishes, katsu, but with miso. Again, I'm using the thick pork loin from Costco, and it's been frozen, so I wiped off the moisture on the surface. First, sprinkle some salt and pepper on both sides. I'm making the katsu for one portion since I only had one pork loin left today, but you might want to cook more because it's really tasty. Next, tenderize the pork. It might be a little extra work, but it really pays off when we buy thick, affordable cuts of meat. When making katsu, we cut the pork sinews to prevent it from shrinking and to keep it tender. If you have the time, please do the same for the other side. Today, I'm cutting the pork slightly larger than the one bite sizes to make katsu that resembles chicken nuggets. Also, it cooks faster and it's more shareable. Mm -hmm. 
This is the special trick I wanted to show you today to make katsu so much easier. Instead of using flour and an egg to flat the pork before adding panko, just call it with mayonnaise. This will reduce the cooking time and make cleanup up easier, but it still tastes amazing. Now it's time to bread the pork with panko. Coat the pork pieces one by one, ensuring all sides are covered with panko. By the way, I use Japanese mayo, but I think you can use American mayonnaise too. This step won't affect the taste much. Now they are nicely coated. Add some cooking oil in a pot to fry the katsu. As long as the oil is about half the thickness of the katsu, it will be enough for frying. Turn the heat to the lower side of medium and warm the oil. To check if the oil is ready for frying, look for small bubbles forming in the oil or a drop of blood come in. If it flows to the surface and it starts to sizzle, the oil is hot enough. Gently place the pork pieces in the oil. It might be better to use a bigger pot, but I didn't want to use too much oil, so I just used this small one this time, and it worked. Very deep frying the pork, let's make the red miso sauce to enjoy with the katsu. Add 2 tablespoons each of red miso, mirroring, and sugar, along with the 3 tablespoons of water. Without the water, the sauce is too thick and heavy, so it's better to add some water there. This red miso sauce has a rich umami flavor with a hint of sweetness, which pairs perfect with the juicy crispy katsu. Back to the katsu. I cooked them for several minutes and once they got a golden brown color, it was time to flip them to the other side to cook. Cook for a few more minutes to get a golden brown color on all sides. They have a beautiful golden brown color and already look so delicious. When they're cooked, place them on a paper towel to absorb any excess oil before serving. Place the miso sauce on top of the katsu. For this recipe, I recommend using red miso because the rich flavor enhances the dish and complements the crispy breading. Sprinkle sesame seeds to make it more appealing and add a slightly nutty flavor. My family likes this miso version of katsu more than the regular sauce tonkatsu. Maybe because I'm from Nagoya, Japan, where red miso is famous. You can use this sauce for chicken katsu or tofu, and it's really tasty, so give it a try. Thank you so much for watching! Arigatou gozaimasu! See you! またね!